so chapter one, section one. Uh, tomorrow there will be a quiz on this, so you want to jot this down somewhere now, study it somewhere in the next 24 hours. Uh, the first question, I believe, is a 13-point question. I'll pull the quiz and look at it in a minute. Uh, but I think the first question is a 13-point open-ended sort of thing. It's a big empty space that says, name and describe the kinds of numbers we talked about in class yesterday. Because by tomorrow, today will be yesterday. So can anybody tell me a name of a kind of number that you've heard of in your math studying career? Yes, sir. Yeah, just give me one. Don't be greedy. There's lots of hands. Irrational. Irrational. irrational? Yeah. I agree with that. There is a kind of numbers called irrational numbers. So that's up there somewhere. It doesn't really matter if you do this in outline form or not. I'll, I'll tell you when I'm done why I outlined it the way I outlined it. Or, or maybe you'll tell me that. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, irrational numbers are a club. That's true. And there. Uh, prime. Prime is true. That's not going to make our list today. But yeah, that's a that's a thing. You have no way to know that wouldn't make my list. Real. There are real numbers. I'm going to throw real numbers up to the top. Zach. There are a thing called whole numbers. I'm going to stick whole numbers in at that level for reasons that I'll explain in a minute. Um, integers? There are integers. I'm going to throw integers up a level for reasons that we'll discuss in a minute. There are rational numbers. I'm going to throw that up here. There's one more. The one more actually has two names. I didn't hear what that was, but I don't think so. There you go. Next. Counting. There is counting. Okay. Counting numbers have an alternate name that's just as good as calling a counting number. Natural. Natural. So there's seven of our 13 points. It'll ask you to name them. There's seven names for six groups because the one group had two names. Uh, and that'll ask to describe them. So, Describing them is part of the reason why I put them the way I put them, I suppose. Uh, can anybody describe anything about any of these types? What makes them be that type? What's going on with the types? Counting numbers is just positive. It's like one through positive. Yeah. The easiest way to list the, to describe the counting numbers is it's one, two, three, and it'll go forever. How can I show the foreverness of a list like that? Okay. It goes on, on, on. So counting numbers, natural numbers, it's one, two, three, dot, 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 you know, goes on forever. No decimal stuff, no fraction stuff, not, nothing fancy, nothing weird, just counting numbers, like numbers you would hear from a very small child if you said to your little nephew or brother or whoever, do you know how to count? Yeah, show me. They're going to start at one, and they're going to go however far they go. That's what counting's about. One to whatever, those are counting numbers, natural numbers. Anybody have a thought on any of the other lists? Yeah. Um, are rational numbers like rational numbers? Yeah, that's one way we can do it. Rational numbers, one way to explain it is that they can be fractions. So if you go with that, I'd give you a point for that. That's a truth. Go again. Are integers all numbers that are under one? You might, what you mean, I think yes, the way you're saying it, I'm going to say no. Uh, when you say all numbers, I'm going to be probably meaner in what I mean by all numbers and what you mean by so all like numbers. So you would go with negative 2 and negative 1 and 0 and 2. 1, 2, and then like dots. Yeah, I'd go with that. Uh, if you said all the numbers that I marked on my number line, I would say yes. But if you say all numbers, I'd say no. Can somebody give me an example of a number that's not an integer, but it's still a number? One and one half. One and a half. One and a half is still a number, but it's not an integer. So if we go with number line kind of numbers, positive and negative whole numbers, I'd say yeah, that those are what the ra uh, integers are. Uh, it's dot, dot, dots on both ends of the lists because they go Forever both ways. 
other explanations of the numbers. Yeah, it's cool, like one, two, three. Uh, we got the one, two, three. So it, it is. It, you're in the ballpark, not not quite. Zero, one, two, three. The whole numbers include zero, as well as the one, two, three. So it's almost the same list, but zero counts as a whole number. Zero counts as an integer. Zero doesn't count as a natural number. Uh, memory tricks. I use homonyms to sometimes tip people off. You know, this word sounds like this word, whole and whole. A whole looks like a zero, essentially. If I try to show you what a whole looks like, holes look like zeros. This kind of H O L E holes, like a golf course hole, looks like not like that. But the holes include zero. Zeros look like holes. Maybe that helps, maybe it didn't. I don't know. That's our description. We can explain rational another way. We can explain irrational. We can explain real. Maybe if you have those in your archives of your memories somewhere. Um, are real numbers like also fractional things? Yeah, those can get included in reals. Yeah. Just Yeah, a real number is going to be all the numbers that you know. And you don't have to put this on the quiz, but I'll say until chapter 7. Okay. So chapter 7 will take a turn into new areas of your life that you're probably unfamiliar with. Unless you've been watching YouTube videos and doing math research on your own because math is an interest of yours, you will not have heard of these numbers until chapter 7, and that's okay. Uh, but there are numbers that exist in the universe of math that are not real numbers. But up until this point in your life, Every number you've ever seen in a, in a class has been a real number. Decimals, fractions, whole numbers, all those numbers. Anything you've ever seen, positives, negatives, whatever. Everything you've ever seen before has been a real number. Some things you haven't seen before until chapter 7 won't be real numbers. So stay tuned for that someday. But again, you don't have to write that on the quiz. I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, so if you say real numbers are all the numbers you know, I agree. If you say real numbers are all the numbers that anyone has seen, including me, I'm saying no, that is not correct. Uh, but real numbers, it's all the numbers you know. Uh, for now, we'll go with that. Rational, there's another way to explain them. Irrational, we need to explain. Aren't your bad ones like repeating? Uh, that's part of it. Yeah, the irrational, uh, no, I take that back. I disagree with that. It can be made into a fraction. Okay, we can do that. Irrational can't be a fraction. But here's the way I always score this quiz. If here you use the answer that it can be a fraction, you can't use the answer here that it can't be a fraction. That's too easy because there's another way we can approach these. Okay, so if here you say it can be a fraction, you need to hunt this other choice. If you say here it can't be a fraction, here you need to hunt a different choice. There's a flip side to that coin, and I want to hit both sides of the coin. Is it like decimals? It has to do something with decimals. So if you're irrational, the decimals do some stuff. If you're an irrational, the decimals do some different stuff. Because rationals and irrationals are opposites. Okay. If you're rational, you can't be irrational. If you're irrational, you can't be rational. If you're one or the other. You can't be both. So the definitions are all opposites. The words are opposites. So rational can be fractions. Irrational, but can't be fractions. And then the decimals, as a result, have to take two different roads. Anybody have a thought on if you're rational, what will be a road that the decimal is going to travel? They could end. They don't all end. But they could end. Uh, can anybody give me an example of a rational number, and then once it's a decimal, it just it ends? Yeah. If we made that into a like, where did that come from? Though? Like so three tenths. Three. Okay. Something with three tenths turns into point three. Can somebody give me a fractiony kind of thing that the decimal doesn't end? Uh, that's not a, fr a fractiony kind of thing. One third. One third. 
Okay, if one third is rational, it's a fraction. What happens to the decimal on one third if you try to make one third a decimal? Yeah, yeah what is it? Anybody six wants? What? It's just what? Six repeating? No, it's not six repeating. Yeah, it's like point three 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 three. Okay, it never ends, but it does. Repeat. Repeat. So if you have a rational number, if it's made a decimal, the decimal could end, it could repeat. Doesn't matter either way. If it has a pattern to repeat, you're good. If it ends, it's good. Rational has those choices. So what would happen to irrationals never if you made them decimals? They never repeat. They never repeat and never end. So the decimals on irrationals never repeat, never end. There's one most famous number that does that. What's the most famous number that does that? That's where your pi would fit in. Uh, pi is an irrational number because if made a decimal, that decimal never repeats in a pattern and it never ends. Uh, there's other numbers that you might know that are irrational. We'll get back to that in a second. But for the purposes of the quiz, you don't have to write pi in there. Uh, but if you just sort of re redo what I did, that, that's what we're hunting. Uh, why did I put this one at the top of the list as like the farthest that way aligned? Why does that have some meaning? It's because like every whole number, it's like they like Contain they contain each other, basically, yeah. Uh, it's kind of like, right, if I asked you right now, where are you? Where, cool. where are you? You could take a lot of ways to answer that it's question. Like we're in school. You're in, in Cheswick Rose Christian Rose. Academy. Miss Rose. You're in room one. In a desk. In a we're desk. In a Think bigger. Pennsylvania. You're in Pennsylvania. You're in, the in the United States. You're on Earth. You're on Earth. Okay. The real numbers is kind of like the Earth. Okay. If you're in room one, you're guaranteed to be on Earth. If you're on Earth, are you guaranteed to be in room one? No, that's silly. Okay. But the real numbers is like the Earth. If you're uh, if you're any of these groups, you're automatically there. You know, just like if you're in Pennsylvania, you're automatically in America. If you're in Cheswick, you're automatically in Allegheny County. Like, there's things like that. Real number is the group that swallowed up everybody. Rational and irrational, I indented a little bit because they're types of real numbers, but why, why did I go like an A, B thing on them? They're groups, and what's true about the groups? Like they don't fit into each other. They don't fit into each other. They're completely unrelated. It, they're exclusive of each other. If you're one of them, you cannot be the other one. But if you put them together, what happens if you put these together? If you put all the rationals with all the irrationals together, where are you living? You're living in the real. You know, the, the reals are split into those two sides. Every integer, I invented a little bit here, every integer is guaranteed to be rational. And every rational is guaranteed to be real. If you follow the indentation up, if you're in this lower group, you're automatically in every group above it. This is like Earth compared to America compared to Pennsylvania or something. If you're in this club, you're automatically in the other clubs. Every whole is guaranteed to be an entity. And every county or national is guaranteed to be a whole. And therefore, an integer and uh, and uh, so th that's why I indented them the way I indented them. I don't care if you indent them that way, but it's informative in the notes at least to go that way. So let's look at this list: A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. Ten of them. How many of those 10 are real? All 10. All 10. I didn't give you anything there that you haven't seen before. I gave you some that maybe you like less than others. You're probably less happy about the square root of 2 than you are about 10. But those are all real numbers. All 10 of those, 10 for 10, they're all real numbers. 
Uh, the first homework game on the homework page will just be like give you this big list and say who's real, who's this, who's that, who's the other thing. Uh, the first quiz you take, the first question will be here's a list of numbers, who's what. You know, so there's a list, who's real, all time. Are there more rational ones or are there more irrational ones on the board? Rational. There are more rationals. So let's count irrationals. Can anybody confidently give me an irrational cow? It's less than half for sure. I'm just looking for right now for a count of how many. I agree with two. The question is then, which two are the irrationals? Uh, let's spot one first. What's the one that you can all be most confident in that it's irrational? Yeah, the pi. Pi is irrational. We already talked about that. That's for sure. That's a decimal that would never end. It would never repeat. It's just a big, giant mess. That is one of the two irrational. Since it's irrational, can it be in any of these other clubs? No. The irrationals just stand alone. The rationals and irrationals is like Pennsylvania or Ohio. You pick one. And we all know what the right choice is. Um, what's the other irrational? That's square root of 2. If you grab your calculator and punch in the square root of 2, you would see it fill your whole display and you might notice that there's no real pattern to it. it. Square roots are the second most common in, in your life, probably. Uh, irrational numbers. Square roots are stuff that you just can't do them. That's going to be irrational. So why is the square root of 9 not irrational? Why is the square root of 9 going to go in the rational club, even though I got a square root? So I don't know if that got cut off or what, but pi was irrational, that's the most famous thing. The square roots, I think that probably recorded. Square root of 9 we were talking about, it's going to become 3. Square root of 9 is 3. 3 is going to be rational, just like negative 3 and 0 and 10 and all the like things we could make in fractions. Those are all rational numbers. So we've got 2 irrationals in the list, 8 rationals in the list. Of the 8 rationals, how many of the eight still showing are also integers? All ten were real. Eight of them came up rational. How many of those eight still not crossed off up there count as integers? Um, just how many? Let's just do a count first. Four? I agree with four. There are four integers up there on the board. Can somebody other than the person who said four spot which four? Are the four and the three? Yeah. Three, um, negative three, zero, ten. That's the four. So integers can be positive or negative or zero, and this now counts now that we recognize three nine is just plain old three. The number line mark numbers, those are all the integers that we have. There's four of them. If we go hunting whole numbers, should we hunt circled stuff or uncircled stuff? Circled. Only circled stuff. For something to be a whole number, it has to be an integer. Since these weren't integers, they can't be holes. That's just not an option. The holes can only be the integers. Is every integer a hole? No. So out of the four, out of the four circles, how many of those four circles also are holes. Three. Three. I agree. Somebody else? Which three? Which three are the three, uh, the three circle ones that also count as, let's do this. Which one should I ditch? If I'm trying to go holes instead of integers, who's out? Negative three. We don't do uh, negative numbers as part of the holes. Counting? Where should I look to find the ones that are counting? The ones that are still circled. So out of the three that are still circled, how many of those three are the counting? Two. Who should we ditch? Zero. Zero is not a counting number. That's the first objective of the day, kinds of numbers. Question about that? Okay, one thing the homework will ask you to do is if something's rational, show that it is. 
So for 10, if you wanted to show me 10 was rational, how would you show that to me? Put it over 1. They'll ask for two possibles. So how could you do another possible answer instead of 10 over 1? Two over 20? Plus? I mean, two, 20 over 2. 20 over 2. You could just use the thing in seventh grade if you were here that our book used to call the name changer machine. You know, if you want to turn one fraction into another fraction, if you multiply the top by something, you just have to multiply the bottom. So if I've got like turning the top into 50, I just have to turn the bottom into 5. If I wanted to turn the top into 10 million, I would just need to turn the bottom into mm -hmm. one million, however you want to do that. Uh, but the book and the homework will ask you to show that it's rational and you have to make yourself a fraction. Uh, so seven eighths, it already is a fraction. If I want another fraction, because they're going to want two, what would be another choice? 14 over 60, you multiply by two. I was going to multiply by 10 and go 70 over 80. You know, multiply by anything that's easy to just change them around, you'd be fine. How about the negative 0.7? How can you make that a fraction and show it's rational? That's close. 7 over 10. 7 over 10. Uh, this is in the 10th place, so we take the 7, we put it over 10. And I was going to let that slide and then tell people we had some mistakes and we caught it. If the question comes in negative, Make sure your answer comes in negative. Uh, so here's a trick. Uh, if I want to show that this is negative, where should I put the negative? Like outside of the fraction. I could put it outside of the whole fraction. I could put it just on the top. I could put it just on the bottom. All three of those are right. I just did three names there. That would work. If the book says two names, I just did three names. Just play with the negatives. Here's a way I can play with negatives up here. How can I play with negatives up here to change this, but it's still positive 10? Negative on top and one. Negative on both. Two negatives makes a positive. So if the book says, hey, give me two names, and they already gave you seven eighths, give them back negative seven eighths. Or seven over negative eight. I mean, that's a, a sneaky cheat. It's a different name. Count. It's fine. Uh, 12.37, how could you make that a fraction? Well, you're not allowed a mixed number. Mixed numbers are different than fractions. That's right. Can you just do like 1 over 12? Um, no. 1,237. Copy the 1,237 as it is. It's all going to come to the top in the same order that it was. And then the bottom is 100 because that's its place. If they want a second name, here's my sneakiest way to do a second name. That's another name. You're good. Or it add an extra zero at the end or something. Uh, how about two and a half? How do you make two and a half? Not be a mixed number. Mixed numbers don't count. Fractions only. Five over two. What's the process? Correct. That's correct. The bottom times the whole number adds the top. That's a new top. Just leave the bottom alone. If you want another name, I don't know. Somebody given another name. Ten over four is five. You know, double both, play with signs, play it however you want to play. Question about showing something's rational, make a fraction out of it. Okay, let's do a stop and we'll slide down the line. So quiz tomorrow when you see it, again, the first 13 will say name and describe all the kinds of numbers. We just did that over there. There will be seven topics, six explanations. That's the 13 points. Then I'll throw you seven properties. I'll give you the name. And what you're going to have to do is some kind of like an algebra sentence to it. Uh, but for now, we'll see if you can brainstorm some of the names and we'll just throw them up there. Can anybody think of a property from your algebra one, geometry, whatever math you've had experiences, property name? Do you want to like put properties of inequality or just a geometry? 
there were some properties of equality, none of those will make this. So yeah, we did those last year, geometry, but they, they won't make this public. There's the commutative property, commutative property will make the list. So there is a commutative property of addition. There's also a commutative property multiplication. So tomorrow, I'll give you the title and you'll come back with a sentence for me. I won't do both of these. I'll pick one of the two commutative properties. Can anybody remember the algebra sentence for the commutative property or remember anything what that was about? I'll swatch that an A plus B. equals B plus A. The commutative properties just tell you you can switch the order, whatever they're in, it doesn't matter. So commutative property for adding A plus B equals B plus A. Do you have to use those letters? No. So use your initials or whatever you want. But you need to use variables and switch them. Because if you would say something like 3 plus 4 equals 4 plus 3, you're acting like that's only true for 3 and 4. That's not what you want to communicate. When you use variables, you mean that that can represent literally any number. So we want to use variables in these, not numbers, but you can use whatever variables you want. If I flip it to a multiplication commutative property, what would you do there? A, B plus B, A. Uh, no? Or times A, B equals B, A. A, B equals B, A. A times B equals B times A. Uh, you could use the like multiplication dot if you wanted to, or you can just write the variables next to each other. Why wouldn't you want to use this for multiplication? So it looks like a variable, and you know, stop doing that. We want to write stuff next to each other, or use the dots, or use other ways to show multiplication. Uh, another property type? Distributive. Distributive property will make it. So I'll say distributive property, and what you would do is basically like make me a distributing problem that has bunches of variables in it. What's a distributing problem look like? It's like a and then parentheses. It has an A and then it has some parentheses. B, B plus C. Something like B plus C. You could also do B minus C, whatever you want for sign, and then just like distribute it. It turns into A B plus A C. A B plus A C. That's all good. I agree with that. Distributive property, that is a win. Um, another one. Anybody have another one? It's a pretty well known one. It starts with an A. Associative. associative. There's an associative for add. There's an associative for multiply. I'll just pick one and you kind of do this. Can anybody do an associative property? I'll spot you an A plus B plus C. C plus B plus A. I'm not going to do that. That would be commutative because you're just scrambling the order. Okay, so this time I can do parentheses for the AB family. And then A plus B plus C. Okay, I keep the order the same for the second family. I'm going to go ABC, ABC, not messing with the order because I'm not trying to commutative. It's done. Parentheses, B, C. Parentheses around the B, C group. So if I want to go multiply on one side of the equals, I'm going to go ABC. A, the other side's going to go ABC. A, Don't mess with the order. The only difference is one of the groups we're going to go around AB and the other one BC. That's probably the three most likely ones that you would remember. The other ones you probably won't remember, but they're easier. So you win some and you lose some. There's a thing called the adding zero property that you've known since you were pretty small. I can tell you my kids by kindergarten, they were familiar with the adding zero property. They didn't know like what it was, but I can tell you every kindergarten paper they got that the teacher said, make up your own adding problem. My children, every adding problem I ever saw them do in kindergarten involved, they used the adding zero property because they were trying to keep their homework short. What's the adding zero property about? It's like A plus zero equals A. A plus zero equals A. If you have anything and you add zero, you get itself back. That's like the easiest adding you could ever do for yourself. Can anybody think of other easy math you've done that you might have cheated your kindergarten worksheets with? Um, Subtracting zero is not a, a property. I mean, it could be, but it, it doesn't make the book. Can anybody think of another really easy thing? Multiplying by one. 
Yeah, there is a, I think our book will call it the multiplicative property of one. What's that going to look like? A times one equals A. A times one equals A. Anything times one is itself, that is the multiplicative property of one. There's another one called the property of additive inversion. Anybody have a thought on the property of additive inversions? If I asked you what is the additive inverse of A, does anybody know what the additive inverse of A is? A. It is. How about, let me go to numbers. The people like numbers better. Additive inverse of 7. Negative 7? Is negative 7. The additive inverse of 10. Negative 10. The additive inverse of negative 8 eight. is 8. What's the additive inverse of A? Negative 8. Negative 8. So it has something to do with A's and negative A's. Anybody a thought on, if you take 3 and negative 3, you take 7 and negative 7, you take whatever numbers I said, we include this now in the list. There's something that we could do to them in the same stuff. Wouldn't it just be 0? If you do what? Out? Yeah, they, they can cancel out and equal 0. If you... As a, as a if you do what to them? Uh, divide. Or no, so, wait. Take three, take negative three, do something with them, it makes zero. Add. Add. Take eight, take negative eight, do this, make zero. Add. Add. So if you have a number, you add its opposite, it'll always make zero. That's the property of additive inversion. How important is it that you memorize these? Not very. Uh, how important is it that you have the ability to take a thought and somehow express it with math? That's going to be kind of a big deal over the course of Algebra 2. So if I say to you, like, take, take a number, add zero to it, and you always get the same number, that's like an idea that you know. The ability to express that idea this way is a little bit unfamiliar to you, but it, it's something you're going to have to get a little better at over the years. Translate, like, an idea or a, a situation to a math uh, there's also a thing called the property of multiplicative inverses. Multiplicative inverse is a fancy name for a reciprocal. What do I mean by a reciprocal? Yeah, it's just a fraction flip. So two thirds reciprocal is three over two. Uh, what's eight's reciprocal? One over eight. What would be A's reciprocal? One over eight. There's something we can do with numbers like that. The same thing always results. If you multiply them, it'll always equal one. Two thirds times three halves. It, it makes one every time. That's just how that goes. So the quiz is 20. First 13 is just what we described in those categories. This seven, it'll be in a different order because we just kind of threw them out randomly. Uh, I'll give you the title. What you're going to give me is this ABC kind of thing. Best way to study for that is probably an empty sheet. Just write them down. And then from a sheet where you wrote the titles, see if you can write them down. Quiz yourself. Do it until you're ready and move on with your life. Uh, homework we're working off of page five, mostly spills into page six. So if you want to look there, we're already there. Um, the first four are types of numbers. We kind of rehearsed that already, so I don't think I need to do that again. Uh, I was going to look at number five, but I kind of feel like I did that already. Uh, when we turned stuff into fractions and did two names, I already covered that pretty adequately. 13 to 20, let's talk about 13. If you want to make 3 eighths a decimal, I would grab a calculator and what are you going to push? How can you make 3 eighths a decimal? 3 divided by 8. 3 divided by 8. Do top number divided by bottom number. So if you go top number divided by bottom number, you're going to make a bunch of decimals. If they repeat, what do you do? You look, put a bar on things. Whatever pattern repeats, you need to put a bar on the top. So that's 13 to 20. 21 to 28 is kind of like what we already did over there when we made all our fractions. 
but you only have to do one name. Starting on 21 to 28, one name per thing. 2930 is like one to four. It's the same game we started class with, a whole list of numbers and pick who is what. 31 to 38 is like baby stuff. Pick greater than or less than. So just who's the bigger number, greater, less, or equal to is what you're doing 35 to 38. And then the last group of 39, uh, they want you to do five different names for some numbers. Over there, we were doing two, three, four, five names sometimes. Uh, 39 to 42 is group, they want you to do five names for the numbers. So if you're a person who writes things down, what you want to write down is page five from one to 42, uh, 20 point quiz on vocabulary. But you can also rely on your syllabus. Your syllabus wrote it down for you. Just you can follow what the syllabus says. It'll say 20 point quiz. It'll say uh, page five, one to 42. See ya.